All right, so let me work on this question. It says, it's giving a description of an object on which a force is being applied. It says a constant some amount of force. I think the way it's wording the remainder of the question, this is meant to be the net force. So this amount of net force is applied to some part of some mass initially at rest. So I know initial velocity of zero on a level floor. Okay, so I don't have to worry about gravitational potential energy changing. Um, if a friction is negligible, what is the speed of the cart when it has been pushed uh, eight meters delta x. So for a question like this, um, there's actually a few different ways you can go. You could actually figure out the acceleration of the cart from what you know from Newton's laws. You know, that's going to be net force divided by the mass of the cart. And once you have the acceleration, then you can use the V squared formula. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two times acceleration times delta x. That's certainly possible. And if you solved it this that way, hey, that's not incorrect. Um, but just because we are in the work and energy chapter, let me use something from work and energy chapter, which is the um, work kinetic energy theorem. And it's a fairly simple theorem um, in terms of using it. What the theorem states is that amount of work being done, or more precisely, the net work being done is going to give you the change of kinetic energy. That's equal to change of kinetic energy, uh, which would be you know, spelling it all out, final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And I guess to use it in this context, you need two more expressions. One is the definition of work. Work is defined as, so work due to any single force, or I guess if you're saying network, network could be defined through the net force, which is a vector, that product with the displacement, which is also a vector. Um, and, um, you know, so in this case, the angle between the two vectors are going to be, turn out to be zero. Um, in other cases where it might not be that simple, um, you really have to look at F net times magnitude times the magnitude of delta x times cosine of the angle between them. So that angle is defined as, you know, F net is one of the vectors you're not producting. Delta x is the other vector, the angle theta is between them. So for this question, we don't need all of that. It's going to be much simpler. The other formula you need is the expression for kinetic energy. You know, I don't ask you to memorize many formulas. Expression for kinetic energy is one of those formulas you simply have to memorize. It's a one half times mass of the object times its speed squared. Um, you may be able to drive it, uh, but it, it, driving it every single time you need it too, too tedious. Have it memorized, use it when you need to use it from memory. So using all these, basically what we are saying is, um, let's see, so we are wanting to find the final velocity. I think I can figure out the network as a numerical quantity. So let me do that in a calculator. Um, so I guess uh, this is what I should do. So I have this expression, network is equal to, I think my with my initial kinetic energy, I have a sense that's going to be zero because my initial speed is zero. So really what I have is expression for the final kinetic energy, one half m we final squared, and I need this solved for final um, uh, speed. Oh, let me make use of my computer algebra system as a computer algebra system. I've been using SageMath before um, just to calculate numbers and whatnot, but this is a fully fledged uh, symbolic algebra system. So I can do this. Let me define some variables that I'm going to use. Work, uh, mass, uh, free final, and yeah, I, I think that's enough for now. So with these variables defined, I can uh, write an equation that says my network is equal to this is an assignment to symbol. This is saying the things on the left-hand side is equal to the things on the right-hand side. Slight difference. One-half times mass times 
if we find all squared. And with these things defined, I can actually have the thing solve for the V final. So I say solve. I think I've looked up the syntax for solve before, but if you need a reminder, you can do help solve and get that, get it that way. It's gonna do solve the equation for V final. Um, yeah, and let me actually put that result into a variable. Uh, uh, let, let me do it differently. Okay, I'm gonna solve. <laughs> okay, it'll take a little bit of time and then give me a solution. When it's give me a solution, and let's see. Oh, it's given me two solutions. You can see one here and here. And when you carefully compare them, you will see that oh, they are the same except for the difference of sign, minus and plus. And I hope that makes sense because when you plug it in here, when you square it, you both of these satisfy the equation. So I think I'm going to just take the positive value because then one, they are asking for speed, a positive value. So the solution that I'm looking at is my previous output, underscore, and um, I need the second element. Uh, zero is the first, one is the second element. So that's um, the solution I'm working with. Let me plug in all the numbers. Um, I'm substituting in, um, Let's see, uh, work done. Oh, so for work done, I have to do the calculation on the fly. Based on this, it's going to be force times the delta x, and they are in the same direction, so the, it will be just the force times 12 Newton times eight meters. No minus sign, no cosine of anything else. Um, and the mass of the object is 21 kilogram. I think that's it. Uh, let me see if it'll do decimal appro uh, yeah, it doesn't do decimal approximation on its own. Uh, what's the best way to handle it? Um, I think the I think the best way to handle it is this way. Yeah. So this gets me the right hand side of that equation, and I can pass that through a decimal approximation function. Okay, three point zero two meter per second. Think of it here, 3.02 meter per second. So yeah, that's it, uh, not too hard.